So if you're like me, on your Mac, you never have enough ports. Well, this is your answer. It's the Ugreen RevDoc Max. And this brings you an additional four Lightning 5 ports. And I think as far as I know, it's the only one currently on the market that does that. It's also got a bunch of other ports. So first of all, let's see what's in the box. A very heavy power supply. Wow, that's quite heavy indeed. Interesting though, it's not flat, it's, it's a bit uh, straight. Um, Guess. A power cable, USB to USB C data cable. That's just packaging. And the unit itself, which is also quite heavy. I didn't expect it to be that heavy, but that's the unit. So first of all, we have the power supply. Now I'm a bit surprised in this. As I mentioned, when I was unboxing it. It doesn't sit flat. It's like a, it like moves around, which is like really a bit strange. So what I'm gonna do to fix that, I'm gonna put some sticky feet on the bottom. So I'm gonna put these sticky feet on and that should solve the problem, hopefully. Turn it over. Yeah, that's better. That's much better. Look, it's nice and stable now. Let's get that plugged in. Right, the, the dock itself, so it has a front and a back and it has little feet here and it also has feet here. So you can mount it this way or you can mount it standing up like this. Now I, I prefer it this way, so I'm gonna go with this way now. On the front, you first have a power button. You've then got a USB-C, which is a 10 gigabits per second. You've got two USB A's, which are also 10 gigabits per second. You have a micro um, SD reader and you have a standard SD reader. You also have a 3.5 millimeter audio jack. And turning it round on the back, you have another two USB A ports, but those are only five gigabits per second. You've got a LAN, an RJ45 LAN port, which is 2.5 gig. You have the power, then you have the four um, lightning ports. Now these are lightning five or USB four, but they're obviously reverse compatible to, to, to lightning four as well. I believe lightning three right, right the way down. Um, so you've got three extras. This one is the one that connects to the host. So without further ado, let's um, flip it back around. Let's, so this is um, the data cable it comes with and I've just connected that to one of the ports on my Mac Studio. So this goes into the host port here, like that. And then we will plug the power also into the back here. And strangely, when you uh, first plug it in, it actually powers on, but you can see the little blue light here, but you've actually got this um, on and off switch, so it, it, it starts with green and then it then it it turns to blue. So that's all plugged in and ready to go now. So we will connect it up um, and have a look at it in the Mac Studio. So I've got a, a two or three things here to test it with. I have a SanDisk SSD. This is the four terabyte one, and it's the E61, so it's the the faster version. I think it's the Extreme. And I have a 128 mega, a gigabyte SD card, and that's a V60, so it suggests it can read and write at 280 megabits per second. Three. I also have this, which is an SSD that I've built. I've used a Lexar NQ790 inside, which is a two terabyte one. And then I um, have it in a Zeek case, which is a 40, gigabits per second case. And again, I'm using some high quality cables. So this cable is rated at, um, it's a USB 4, it's rated at 40 gigabits per second, um, 8K 60 Hertz if you wanna use it um, for a monitor. 
And they have another high quality cable here, which is also rated at 40 gigabits per second. It's really important when you, you using data to use the high quality cables that are rated for the speed. If you start using cheaper cables, you will get um, slowdowns with data. It's really important to use cable. So, so what we're gonna do now, we're gonna test a couple of these drives using the dock um, that we've just powered on. Okay, so first of all, we're gonna connect this drive here and we're going to connect that up to one of the um, Thunderbolt ports on the back doesn't really matter which one we've got that connected and now we're going to have a look in here so um, we've got it all plugged in and um, we, we can see the drive on the Mac here this Lexar 2 terabyte so now what we're going to do, we're going to use this um, Blackmagic disk speed test and we're just going to measure the performance of, of this drive here. Um, so we go here, we can select the drive, uh, the Lexar 2 terabyte, um, okay. And then the file size we're going to read and write is three gigabits in the middle. Oops. And then we're going to hit the, the start. As you can see here, we're getting 18 gigabits per second on the right and 20, almost 29 gigabits per second on the read. So incredibly fast um, there. And then we will do the same with um, this sand disk. We will plug that into one of the other ports on the back um, like that and then uh, we can select that drive here so that should be the extreme ssd open that and then we can we can start here so we're getting um about about eight and a half gigabits per second on the right and um, 7.4 gigabits per second on the read so again quite fast um what we'll do now we'll just try uh, let's just eject those drives, let's just eject that extreme SSD. What we'll do, we'll plug this into the um, USB port, um, the USB 4 port at the front, and then we'll see what, what we get in um, on that. So let's just select that drive again, which is the extreme, yep, yeah, let's do that, and then hit this. We should actually get very similar um, figures because this this USB four, four port on the front can handle 10 gigabits per second, so it's not it's not that different um, to when it was plugged into one of the Thunderbolt ports. So what we'll now do, we'll try this Lexar drive in the USB port, and that should be quite limited, I guess, because this is only 10 gigabits per second, whereas the ports on the back are theoretically up to 80 gigabits per second on Thunderbolt 5. Let's just uh, reconfigure that. So we will eject this one and eject this one. And so let's take that out, let's take that out. And we'll plug this into the front here. Um, and then again, let's select the drive. That's the Lexar, open that, and then we can start the test. All right, as you can see now, we get about 8.5 gigabits per second on the right, and 7.4 on the read. Again, that's now being limited by the speed of um, the, the 10 gigabit port. So you can, you can see if you have um, a drive capable like this and you've got it plugged into a lightning port, you're getting really, really super fast. Um, data transfer, just uh, stop that. And then finally, we're gonna try the um, SD card. Now this is not the fastest SD card, it's a V60. It's a Kingston um, React Plus. Um, so let's, let's plug that in and let's see what we get with this. Let's just select the drive. Uh, it's called Untitled, Open. And now with some three gigabyte files, let's 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 test that. So on the right, it starts off pretty fast, but then it drops, it drops quite slowly. I suggest that's probably down to the 
the SD cards. We're getting 130 megabits per second, 125, we're down to 120, so it's about 1.2 gigabits per second. It's pretty slow on, on the right. Um, let's see what we get on the read. On the read, we're getting about 200, so 2.3 gigabits per second, which is cons pretty consistent. Um, let's just try it with a smaller file to see if that um, makes any difference. Uh, we'll try with a 1 gigabit file and, and start that. Uh, yeah, it does make a, a slight bit of difference. We're getting an average write of about 2 gigabits per second and an average read oh it's a bit slower on the read on the one gigabytes but about about 2.3 gigabits per second so actually it's not far off um what the card is actually suggesting i'll just uh, eject that right so now let's do some tests on the macbook this is an original m1 i think it's the m1 Pro or the M1 Ultra, I can't remember. It, it was pretty much top of the range when I bought it a few years ago anyway. First of all, we need to plug the dock into the Mac. So we'll plug that around here um, in this port here. And then um, we'll plug this uh, drive into one of the Thunderbolt ports on the back. Doesn't matter which one, they're all, they're all pretty much the same. So now it's plugged in. We've got the um, disk speed test open again using the Blackmagic one. We should hopefully be able to see that drive yet, the Lexar 2 terabyte. Let's open that and again we select a three gigabyte file which is which is in the middle and then we can test that. So we've got um, 18 gigabits per second on the right and 29 gigabits per second on the read. And that's pretty consistent. Oh, we're up to 30 gigabits per second now on the read, and that's pretty consistent. Um, what we can do, just as a comparison, uh, if I just um, stop that and eject that drive. So now what we'll do, we'll plug this directly into the MacBook and see if there's um, much of a speed difference. So again, we have to select that drive it's our two terabyte open and then start so we've got 20 24 um, and so it's it's slightly faster on the right when you plug it directly in but it's pretty much the same on the read um, again i have no idea why that is if you do know um let me know down in the comments right what we'll do we'll eject that from there and find uh, and eject And then we will plug, oh hang on, just a second, I don't have it. So we will plug this four terabyte one now into one of the ports at the back. And then find that on here. That's the Extreme SSD. So this is the SanDisk 4 terabyte one, and we can see what we're getting from here. So just around nine, eight and a half to nine gigabits per second on the right, and 7.7 um, .7 gigabits per second on the read. So you can see these SanDisk drives are considerably slower than building one with um, an M2 SSD in, in a case that can handle 40 megabits per second and now we will just try we'll just try this ssd in the um usb port on the front now bear in mind this is only a 10 gigabits per second but it shouldn't affect this much because it's not it's not hitting its speed um you know it should be able to handle that that quite quite well so we'll just have, have a look Oh, interestingly, it's slightly faster through that USB port. Um, and I think that's possibly because this is not a dedicated Thunderbolt device. Um, both of these are USB devices. 
Um, whereas I think if it's a dedicated Thunderbolt device, it probably would be a little bit quicker. So we'll just do one last test um, before we finish the testing. And what we're going to do, we're going to plug this um, SSD, a 40 gigabits per second SSD, into the USB port on the front. Now, this should limit this because this is only a 10 gigabits per second port where this can handle 40 gigabits per second. So we'll just see um, how it does. Uh, select the drive, open and start. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's in the limits. It's around 8.2 gigabits per second on the right and sort of eight gigabits per second on the read. So obviously if you do have a fast device like this, you wanna be plugging it into one of the Thunderbolt ports at the back. Okay, so my opinion of this, I think this is an absolutely amazing dock. There's very few on the market that have um, four Thunderbolt ports. So these are actually Thunderbolt five ports, which will actually do up to 80 gigabits per second. That is lightning fast. Unfortunately, I don't have anything else that's um, Thunderbolt 5 to try, but I'm sure, I'm sure they will be. A, the construction is very good. It's all metal. Um, it is a really, really solid piece of kit. And uh, if you have a Mac, um, it's definitely worth investing in this, whether you have a MacBook, whether you have a, a studio, a, a mini, it's definitely worth investing in this. And just one other thing, I don't know whether I'll mention, but this can support multiple monitors up to 8K 60 Hertz. But that will very much depend on the model of Mac you've got. I can't go through it because every Mac has, has different configurations, but it will support multiple monitors. So it's actually more ideal when you're using a MacBook, especially if you have like a MacBook Air because they're limited on the ports. Uh, whereas a studio, it has like four or five Thunderbolt ports and, and two or three USB ports anyway. So it's not so useful with a studio, but for a MacBook or the Mac Mini, it's absolutely fantastic. And uh, yeah, I just, just want to tell you that the video is not sponsored. I bought this with my own money. Here in China, it cost about 1,400 RMB. I think when it goes on sale um, across other parts of the world, it'd be about 300 to $350. I haven't found it on other foreign websites yet. Um, but the, the previous generation was about $250 to $300, so I think this will probably be $50 to $100 more. But yeah, go get yourself one. Anyway, I hope you liked that video, and for now, I'll see you in the next one.